Yamana Rosom is a geophysicist in the oil and gas industry by education and profession. For the last 40 years, he has dedicated most of his time to the development of gas world, Grinja and Amharic software systems. Back in the 1981, he pioneered the first GIS software on the Apple II computer using assembly language. He built an efficient GIS phonetic keyboard, which became a standard in Eritrea and Ethiopian language. The first computer typed Tigrinya later was printed uh, in 1982, which defined a new era for Tigrinya digitization. Due to the incapabilities and the fast changing computer systems in the past four decades, Yamana recreated his good writing system from scratch more than six times, yet he never lost motivation. Instead, he enjoyed learning new programming language and finding new ways to fit 270 characters of the GIS alphabet into the 26 later designed applications. Yamana was a good friend of the legendary Eritrean leader Atul Dabul who in, 18, uh, in 1984 encouraged him to not to stop his effort to modernize Tigrinya, that he took to heart until this day. Thank you. Welcome, uh, Mr. Yamana Rosso. Thank you. Thank you, Aida. Uh, so th thank you, Aida, for the uh, gracious. Uh, <laughs> presentation. Uh, so can you see can you see my screen very yes. well? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just move this a little bit. Yes, hello everyone, members of the organizing committee. Dr. Abraham, Dr. Biniam, and Brother Isaias, uh, and the uh, uh, attendees and sponsors. My name is Yaman Russo. I'm a software developer for more than 40 years. In 1981, while working for the uh, oil and gas industry, I initiated a project to computerize the GIS script on output to computer. Uh, at the time, I didn't know it was, going, it was going to go on for 40 years. So that is a time when there was no IBM PC, there was no internet, and there was no Google search. In this presentation, I will try to cover the highlights of challenges and successes during this period. A, li a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Eritrea when the educational system was in Tigrinya language after sixth grade before it was replaced by Amharic. In 1972, I graduated from the Haile Selassie University as a math major and minor. Uh, immediately after uh, graduation, I was hired by an American oil exploration company as a geophysicist, uh, early on, I had access to powerful uh, computers. Taking advantage of these uh, computers, I taught myself how to program. Over a period of time, I became a professional software developer specializing in uh, 3D uh, imaging. This is a, a map uh, from a book, Writing Systems of the World, by a Japanese author, Akira Nakanishi. It shows that, uh, especially with the focus in Africa, Northern Africa uses Arabic. The uh, rest of Africa uses Latin alphabets. And only Eritrea and Ethiopia have their own Gaza script. Incidentally, uh, in 1980, I visited my high school English teacher, Dr. John Wood. 
in uh, Salem, Oregon. Upon mentioning my plan to develop the software, we visited a computer store. We were, we were shown a Japanese word processor on Apple II computer. This was my first time to see a foreign script on a computer which inspired me a great deal. Uh, like many of the ancient scripts, there are many stone carvings with Gaze and Sabayan scripts in Yemen, Eritrea, and Northern Ethiopia. A closer look at the writings, we can see consonants only. There are no vowels. Later, after the introduction of Christianity into the area, uh, in the fourth century AD, Gaze vowels were introduced to to the modern script using Amhari, Greece, Tigrinya, Tigre, Bilen, and others. After the introduction of Christianity, animal skin was used for writing and translating spiritual books. Thousands of handwritten books on animal skin are preserved in various monasteries in Eritrea and Ethiopia. In 2002, uh, I was doing research and I visited the famous monastery of the Rebizen near Nefasit on the way to Masawa. There are numerous old books at the library shown on the, on the right hand side. I was shown, I was shown a 500 year old book carried by two monks shown on the left. It weighs about 30 kilos. The professional page layout is very impressive. So for a period over a thousand years, writing on animal skin was practiced at various monasteries. Going forward, in, 19, in 1866, Swedish missionaries established a printing press in Minkulu, Eritrea. The Italian company, Franciscana Printing Press was launched in 1911. They developed press leaded gaze letters that were hand picked and laid out on a page. In 1950, during the British Archmarchion in Eritrea, modern education was sprouting throughout Eritrea. The printing press played a big role in providing a service to publish books, newspapers, and more. The picture from Kenesha, the roots development of the Evangelical Church of Eritrea, 1866-1935, by K.J. Lindstrom and Ezra Garamedin, 2011. The top picture is a printing press. The lower picture is a library of the published books. I don't know when the Amharic typewriter was designed. I believe it was after the establishment of printing press. As you can see, gaze letters were too many to fit into the standard keyboard. For this reason, many letters not present on the keyboard were assembled on the fly while typing. Ty typewriter had a steep learning curve. Nevertheless, it was wisely used in government business offices until the introduction of these computers. So that's what I, that's what I come. Uh, with the spread of personal computers in the 70s and 80s, many people wondered whether gaze letters can be used on computers. So in 1981, I bought Apple to computer to start develop the software. Apple computer came with basic programming language, which was easy to learn. It had no tool for designing fonts. Here is how the English word processing worked. They, uh, the computer has uh, a special uh, memory called character generator inside the computer. The one, the one that is on the right hand side. So when the, when the user presses a key, the program would go into the character generator 
where the alphabets are stored, and you would display them on the screen. This is how the English word processor worked at that time. So how can we create this character generator? This was a question uh, that was confronted to me. Designing this character generator looked far-fetched because it would require modification inside the computer. To explore an easier software solution, I did, I did two things. I joined the Houston Apple Users Group that, uh, that we met monthly at the University of Houston. And I subscribed to a magazine called Apple Call to get technical information. So after my subscription, the Apple Call magazine paid off. Reading the Apple Call magazine cover to cover, I discovered an article that I was, that I feel was specifically written for me. They explain how custom fonts can be designed using hexadecimal coding. So this article showed how you can design font using hexadecimal, which is zeros and ones. Each guest letter has to be designed on a graph paper on eight by eight dots, as you can see on the, on the left-hand side. Some gaze letters such as me, che, or che, which are uh, uh, large in size, were forced to fit into eight by eight. For example, if you look at the me, uh, it's supposed to have two circles, but the left-hand side has no circle in it. I'm not going to bore you with the details of how it was developed, but it was a long process. So I chose Apple programming language. Uh, basic is an interpretive language, which means it was slow to process commands. But that is what most programmers used because it was easy to learn. A year later, by 1982, Go's program was successfully written. It was a simple word processor that can edit and print. It used phonetic keyboard, requiring very little training. There was excitement on my part. I wrote a first Tigrinya letter to uh, New SNA, which is the Eritrean Union students in North America, informing them of my success. Unfortunately, the program was running into speed problem while typing. Why? The reason is because basic is interpretive language and was too slow to process this typing. I was disappointed for not anticipating the speed issue. My, excite my excitement was gone. <clears throat> oh, my basic program was discarded was thrown away, except for the gaze fonts. To solve the speed issue, I uh, had to learn a new language. I studied assembling, assembly language programming. On the screen, you can see from the, uh, uh, you can see sample code on, on, the, on the screen of assembly language programming. It had a steep learning curve, but once mastered, you have complete control of the computer. So about 4,000 lines of code was written. The program ran at a speed of light. So it was successful. What about the design of the keyboard? Apple did not have tool for designing keyboard at that time. I took a phonetic approach where these letters were assigned to English letters based on similarity of sound. This method requires little learning on the end user. It's also made easier to program. Vowel keys were assigned to numbers, to number keys for convenience. The word processor was ready to be announced. I wrote a second letter to the new SID announcing the successful completion. So uh, I was invited to 
USAID annual conference in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 1984. It was attended by Eritreans all over the world, including from the APLF leadership in the media. A booth was set up for me to demonstrate to the public. I made a speech to the conference about my successful based computerization. There was a excitement at the conference. Many people came by to, to test the software. Immediately, the APLF radio uh, called them Hafash, broadcast the good news. In 1985, I made an interview with RICE, which is the uh, Eritrea Research and Information Center. The article included a copy of the first Grignard letter written in 1982. Let me see. Good morning. Uh-oh, I think. Anyway, uh, the letters, as you can see, are the same that was designed on the graph paper. So uh, what kind of documents were able to produce using that software? On the screen, there are two sample printouts using the software. Uh, the one on the left is the uh, Eritrean community in Eastern newsletter called Dembe Eritrea. The one on the right hand side is a page from English to Green Dictionary written by a good friend, Mr. Abraham Tolu. This indicates that the software was sophisticated enough to produce such documents. So what is next? Well, now Macintosh computer. In 1984, Apple came out with this new Macintosh computer that took the world by a storm. It had features that was attractive for its development, not available on MS-DOS. It had built-in micrite word processor with graphical user interface. The menu included a variety of fonts, style, and sizes. It put desktop publishing in the hands of individuals. I remember uh, visiting uh, computer stores several times to evaluate the Macintosh. I was really blown away by the power of the small computer. So I decided to start developing games all over again on a Macintosh, similar to the McRite program for English. Uh, if you look on the screen, the McRite program had a uh, a font option to select a large number of fonts. It had also style uh, to select the kind of style for the document. It was a very sophisticated program. So that's what I set out to do. So in 1985, I purchased a Macintosh with all the software and hardware tools required for development. I joined the Apple de uh, the developer program to get access to the technical program tools. Uh, it required, uh, I required assistance from my friend, Emmanuel Domenico, to design this font for me while I focus on the program inside. He had exceptional skill in this calligraphy. He quickly designed a variety of great looking this bitmap fonts. He deserves credit for his talent and time. At this time, only bitmap fonts were available on Macintosh. So by 1987, Gersworth software was developed similar to the McRite program for English. On the screen, you can, you can see the menu uh, that has uh, a variety of fonts font sizes and styling similar to the English McRae program. Again, this was a great achievement for this desktop publishing on a Macintosh. So uh, the first Green book to be published using the Girls Word on Macintosh was in 1987. The book was first written by uh, Francisco Alvarez who was a Portuguese missionary explorer. 
It was translated into Tigrinya by Mr. Haile Bokhre. He is an author of, of, of about 50 books. It was published by Rice, which is a research and information center for Eritrea. So this was the first book that was published using the software. So uh, up to this point, we were using bitmap fonts. But uh, in 1989, a company called Art System was a software to design fonts using PostScript, which is scalable fonts for high-end for high uh, printing. So uh, in 1989, I found a way uh, to design these PostScript fonts matching the original uh, letters used in the high-end printing press. At this time, there is no Unicode. Uh, we are using uh, English fonts. So for this reason, uh, I had to split the GIS letters into two fonts, GIS Matam 1 and GIS Matam 2. The GIS Matam 1 <coughs> included the most frequently used font uh, letters, which is on the uh, white background. And the rarely used GIS letters was put on a, a GIS Matam 2 uh, on the, uh, uh, gray, the gray background. So that's the only way we can design fonts uh, to split them into two because there is no Unicode. Many years, many years later, when Unicode was implemented, the two fonts were co combined into one font called Gaze Matam font. This high precision Gaze Matam font is probably the most accurately designed Gaze font according to ty typography experts. So when Windows came out in the early 90s, it looked very familiar, similar to Macintosh. I am glad DOS was being replaced by Windows. Well, not really replaced. Actually, Windows was running on top of DOS. So it is time to investigate Windows for gaze. Upon researching technical documentation, I discovered Windows component for other languages like GIS. This component uh, allowed a program to, in, to, in, uh, to intercept the keystrokes and to send the appropriate font mapping to display on the screen. So this potentially work on Windows applications written for English. The programming was done in C language, the sixth vowel became the default vowel, which accelerated the typing speed. As a program developer, once the program is completed, you want to take a break. There is a lot more work remaining dealing with setting up installation, copy protection, licensing, testing, uh, and uh, 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 printing user manual. Next, I will explain how this uh, this type font was designed for this game. So, uh, because of the limitation of the font, we are using an English font. We uh, we had to limit the number of characters on the screen. We put all we put about half of these letters in the font table, as you can see on the screen. So the uh, Letters that you see here, about, about, they are about half of the total gaze letters. What about, uh, but at the same time, <clears throat> we also added various attachments, symbols, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see attachments. So what about the rest of the letters? How are you going to generate them? They can be generated on the fly by combining with attachments. In other words, if you take, for example, the letter K right here and combine it with an attachment right here on the bottom, combining both of them gives you the letter Q. 
the same thing with le or the lu. You combine the le right here with the attachment on the bottom, and then you get this letter lu. This way, we were able to generate all the letters while the user is typing on the keyboard. Using this technique, I developed a Gizgate software, which was compatible with Microsoft Office, PageMaker, and many others. It was a breakthrough software. It opened wide open the usage of Giz on uh, Windows applications. After Gizgate was completed in 1985, as an invitation of the Ethiopian government, I spent a year in Eritrea installing training how to use GizGate. Eritrea very quickly adapted the usage of Giz on computers. The usage of Giz on computers is now widely open to all kinds of software applications. GizGate was used to publish school books, newspapers, and all kinds of documentation. On the left, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Word summary document. On the right is a, a, a spreadsheet in Tigrinya. I was very happy to see the wide usage of Gaze software. A few years later, Gaze was accepted in the Unicode standard of world languages. The time had come to implement Gaze Gate into Unicode. So, uh, So in, uh, in the year 2001, as an invitation, again, as an invitation of the Eritrean government, I spent eight months in Eritrea, again, installing and training how to use GizWord software. With the implementation of Unicode, only updating of the software is required. I start to focus on the implementation of the Millicut software, the musical notation of the Orthodox Church. This development effort is still going on in progress. I will skip this, I will skip the details for now. Starting 2010 up to 2019, I developed a few Tigrinya and Amharic language tutorials, mainly for the children of the diaspora families. Uh, you can see there are about what uh, about five or six programs for. Tigrinya on the top, and the same for Amharic on the bottom. So what about uh, at the present time and in the future? What am I doing? Uh, in 2011, I did, I did uh, extensive research into existing Giz mobile application. I have come up with an enhanced Giz word mobile keyboard that uses only lowercase keys. 40 users have tested it for more than five months. I have received valuable feedback from users. Without exception, they all experienced increased speed in typing. I will be racing, hopefully, after one month. So this is a Gizword software on mobile, in other words, Android and, uh, and iPhone and tablets. I have also uh, created a variety of Giz Matam fonts uh, based on the widths of the, of the uh, widths variation. What this means is that there is a font called Giz Matam, which you can see in the red, and then I created a variation of it, which is narrow on the left-hand side and wider on the right-hand side. This gives us a, a variety of fonts for publishing, let's say how you want the title or Maybe you don't have space, uh, or you don't have enough space, and you can, you can use a narrow, uh, a, a narrow font. So I have created about 15 fonts, and this will be released probably in July. Uh, well, I have become really a mobile app developer. Uh, I. Uh, I noticed that uh, language learning is a big problem in the diaspora. Uh, and uh, 
there is a tendency for uh, the young generation really uh, to resist uh, language learning. So I developed a game, uh, uh, a Tigrinya and Amharic language game. The purpose of this game is to introduce the Giz alphabets to children at a very, very early age, just like English. Game is a better way to teach children, otherwise, you know, they uh, resist, you know, resist learning. Again, this game I will be released in mid July in 2022. Uh, another app that I have developed is a, a Kadassia tutorial. Kadassia is a liturgical chant of the Orthodox Church. This uh, chant training takes many, many years. This mobile app combines audio and text and it teaches the Kadassia traditionally taught by the scholars of the, of, the, of the chant. The text contains translation in Tigrinya, Amharic, English, and phonetic case. Again, uh, this will be released in, in July. Uh, people ask me how I, ne how I never gave up. Well, in 1985, I had the opportunity to meet a boy, Welda, Welda Mariam in Dallas, Texas. After demonstrating to him the software on Apple II, his word is translated into English where I am glad to got to see the, he called, he called it invitation. It's an invention, it's not really invention, while I'm still alive. And he advised me to never stop this guy's computerization effort. I remember making that commitment. During these 40 years of continuous effort, there were moments when I, I asked myself whether I should stop to do something else. His words would always pop in my ears. I believe I kept my promise. Uh, actually, there are other courageous Eritrean and Ethiopian uh, professionals who were part of the early games computerization effort, such as uh, Tawel de Stefanos, uh, Adi Gebre and Minyas Agai, who contributed in their own way. Not to forget many Ethiopia professionals who successfully contributed to this software development. Some names worth mentioning are Engineer Fessa Atlau, the late uh, Fakade Mesfin, and Abbas Alemne. I'm sure there are more, but these are just the names that I remember. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Abraham and Dr. Binia and uh, Brother Isaias <coughs> for working very hard uh, to get this uh, uh, symposium uh, going. And uh, I was uh, really <coughs> quite encouraged by shown by them. Personally, I was a, a little bit preoccupied uh, with other projects and I did not do uh, my share. Uh, so I would like to apologize to all of them. But thank you very much. And I am uh, available for any question and answer. Thank you, everybody. Wow. I think all we can say at the moment is, wow, Yamane. <clears throat> we're amazed and we're very grateful for all your contribution and leadership. Uh, if you can un un uh, stop screen sharing so we can see you and then I'm sure we have some questions uh, that we wanted to uh, spend time with you. Uh, so if you stop sharing, then we'll be able to uh to see you fully yeah, same time to find the stop sharing stop sharing on on uh, yeah on your uh on your zoom control should be a big one that says stop share
uh, don't see it for some reason. Okay, got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Technically challenged. I think on, on behalf of all our um, participants, attendees, and uh, all our panelists, organizing, uh, conference organizing committee members, the sponsors, I think we all owe a man a standing ovation. Oh my God. <laughs> standing and uh, applauding for all your efforts. And we are so grateful for all the history, the courage that you demonstrated over the past 40 years. Thank you. A lot of what's happening, what we're enjoying right now is based on your work and your effort and your patience. So we all owe, and a lot of our communities, Ethiopian Eritrean communities, um, owe you a great deal. So we're standing and uh, applauding and giving you a standing ovation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abra. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, let's see if there are any questions, maybe Binyam, if you can see any specific questions or comments that we would like to share would be a great uh, moment for us to honor Yamane. Yes, I do see uh, some questions. One of them is from Ephraim. He says that excellent work. There is, there is a need to convert documents, soft copy that were created pre-Unicode to Unicode. Is there any suggestion you can uh, recommend how to convert documents created before Unicode and how to convert them back to Unicode? Yes, uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, and it is a, a question that I actually addressed when I created Gizword software. Um, but since then, uh, a software has been created to convert uh, all the documents, not Unicode documents into Unicode. And uh, I would be more than happy to share that to you. Maybe I can, uh, we can share my, uh, my email address, okay? So we can share the, uh, what to find that software. And so documents, all documents can be converted into Unicode. So it, a conversion software is available. Wonderful. We do have the email address for Ephraim and all our attendees and we'll be able to share that with them after uh, conference today. من عالبات حدا نقولكم سوف نتعلم عريهم بمبزاحتو تو بريزنتيشن كساع هجي بإنجليزينيا غيرنا يو تو سيمبل زخانا نقرات تقرينيا شير ندا قبرنا زي مخنياتو تزبزح تاريخ تزبزح بإنجليش فلاي كانتوم عاديينس سبانسر تبو إنسانا تبو حبريتا خرونو وام انتي إيو أبتي كابتباح جميرو زلو بريزنتيشنز مدبات مبزاحتو إتي أستمغلوتات بريزنتيشن بتقرينيا خوونيو تقرينيا بإنجليش سابتايتو زلو ويكا إنجليش كوينو بتقرينيا Mr. Rabzalloh Khawi. And the alama Z is to make sure that we capture the important uh, concepts and the important ideas so we don't lose for the sake of finding uh, Tigrinya words and so on. Uh, but uh, the remaining sessions, we will have a lot of interactions using Tigrinya. Uh, wonderful. By the way, uh, uh, there is also Interesting question from Athena. She is asking to Mr. Rusam, how would you like the use to pick up your work moving forward? Or what do you envision for future and how you the use contribute? So yeah, if you have some words for our users and how they can pick up your work and continue, that would be a good advice now. Uh, 
Let's see. Can I see that question myself? Uh, yes. If you click on Q and A. Uh, what what is the Q and A? I haven't seen that yet. At the bottom. Oh, At the bottom. Okay. Q and A. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. The, the, the one before the last one. Okay. So how how would you like to how do you speak up your work? Zatola, how would you like to use the pick up your work moving yes. forward? Or what do you envision for the future and how the use contribute? Well, uh, nowadays, really, there are a lot of uh, open source softwares uh, that uh, you can easily uh, develop. Uh, gay software. I think uh, there are already softwares, really. There are Tigrinya and Hamark softwares. Uh, there is Gay's IME by Futsu, and there is uh, uh, there are quite quite a bit of actual softwares out there. So, uh, I mean. Uh, it just, it's just a matter of interest. If they are interested, or uh, I can guide them, they can, they can contact me. Uh, like I say, it's much easier now. There's a lot of tools and a lot of open source. Um, and really, the youth, the young generation, really, really should focus on developing, uh, on learning technology to, to develop our language. It's very, very important. <clears throat> But like I say, if anybody's interested, they can contact me and I can share, you know, my ideas with them. Thank you, Yamane. Yeah, I also have this, this question the same then. I was asking myself how uh, young people can be motivated to do what you did. For your work, it's special because you didn't have Google to search or you don't have YouTube to look for. You are doing it all by yourself. But right now, there are more resources, but still, uh, you know, programming with Tigrinya is still difficult. And yeah, the patience is the difficult part for young people. They want to build something and then get a result with a few months, but usually that's not easy. Or if you are trying to develop an app and try to sell it and uh, try to support yourself that way. That's also not easy. So really the motivation, the interest need to be much higher than a normal things. And if that, uh, if you have the motivation and the interest and the patience, that's how you can make a difference in Tupinia. There is no, I haven't seen a quicker way and probably Yaman it is even harder for him. That was yeah, that's the answer I get so far for myself. Yeah, I think uh, uh, you're right, uh, Biniam. There are a lot more resources now. But uh, the dedication is very important because uh, it's not viable uh, for business you know, like ROI, return on investment. Um, but I was thinking that uh, maybe if there is sponsors, if there is funding for some project for development, that would be very helpful. Uh, another is if we can collaborate, you know, working together, uh, that, would, uh, that would accelerate the development. So I'm always looking for really uh, other developers to network and to, to uh, uh, you know, develop something worthwhile. But definitely, maybe the initiative which we have started can facilitate funding for some important projects. Uh, yeah, Yamana, there is another question that uh, I see here. It says, "How close to the original Mahatam font is your good is Mahatam, the one you got from Nkulu?" Uh, that's one question that I see here. 
Oh. Well, uh, I actually have a plan to speak uh, exactly how I designed it. Um, you know, uh, there is a there is a saying in Tigrinya. Uh, what is it called? Do it at Ababai, which means because I was not a graphics artist, I really had no talent to design font. I came up with a technique that I believe uh, I spent a lot of time and designed it to match the original uh, font used for, uh, for, uh, for printing press. And uh, by talking to some experts in, uh, in uh, publishing and printing, uh, they all tell me without exception that this is the most accurately designed font uh, of all the fonts out there in the market. Uh, and so that's, that's not only my evaluation, but it's, that's the evaluation of experts. It doesn't mean it cannot be enhanced, but really it's, it's very close to it. I hope I answer your question. It also it also mentions how about the attachment. Well, that is before the Unicode. See, when the Unicode came, uh, we combined the two English fonts into one. The attachment is the same as Gizmatam, but. It's not as accurate as Gizmatam because when you do the attachment, you lose some accuracy. You get some compromise in the shape. But it looks, you can see the distortion on the screen, but when you print it, it's really, really very close. People did not really notice the difference. But definitely the Unicode Gizmatam is more accurate than the attachment. Biniam, do you see the last question? Where does the name oh, Mahtam yeah. comes from? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, from my understanding, Mahtam means really the, uh, the, the font that was used by the printing press, which is the high end. Uh, the high end design of the of the Tigrinya letter. So uh, for me, Mahatan means really high end, high end uh, font that is used by the printing presses. Uh, that is the best name I can come up with. Yeah, there was one more question. We have a few more minutes. How can we petition Apple and Google to make his Mahatam the default font? That is, that is an excellent question. <laughs> that is an excellent question because it is the most accurately designed font. Actually, many people don't know about it. And I see people publish books and I want, and I see some fonts really that are not desirable. And I always wonder, and I say, I wish they had used Gizmatam font because Gizmatam font is a font that we are used to, you know, in, uh, for reading. It gives a better reading. It gives a better experience for a, for a reader. So if there is an initiative to, uh, if there could be an initiative to appeal to Google and Apple to adapt against Mahatam font, that would be great. Uh, I would be more than happy to participate in such initiative. That's a very great question. It's something that I've been thinking myself. Is there any uh, licensing that you require for this or is it, can they use it? 
from your point of view? No, actually, it is part of the Gazewood software. When you when somebody buys Gazewood software, mm -hmm. then it's installed. It's installed in a computer. Okay, so means that the, if somebody petition to add this Google to add it to Google or Apple, then they can do it. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's, my, it's my own creation. So I, I have a complete, complete control of the phone. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we still have a few more questions. So, uh, Ephraim asking again Is there a study about font sets? Easy to read and write instead of staying in original good fonts. But we uh, hear what we used to. So, yeah, basically, he's asking you which font is easier to read and easier to write versus the other font. Yeah, that's Actually, I did not mention here, but I have a variety of fonts. Some are very light, some are very thick. Uh, unfortunately, I have not published them, but uh, they will be published this summer. Uh, actually, I do have a, call, a font called Gaze Matem Thin. I don't know if that's the question, but Mm -hmm. You know, the Giz Matem font itself, like I showed on the screen, uh, we created a variety of, of the same font as a font family. Okay, yeah, very good. Uh, I also see questions in the chat and uh, one of the questions says, uh, how do you keep abreast of the new programming languages? and technologies needed to computerize Tigrinya. That's... <laughs> uh, well, that's always a challenge. You know, when I first started to program in 1972, believe it or not, uh, teaching myself to program, it was fourth run, fourth run program. Later, uh, it was uh, C language. And then C++. Um, and uh, nowadays, really, uh, I'm not really a hardcore programmer. I'm more into mobile application development. But learning the keep up with the languages is really is that's always a challenge. Um, yeah, I mean, at this age, you know, I'm. 73 years old. It's not easy to learn new language, uh, but that's always a challenge, really. But I, I like learning, really. I always like learning. I always learn technology. So it takes me longer, but I'm, you know, I'm keeping up with it. I think this has been a wonderful uh, session. Uh, we've been able to see the historical background development, the challenge and everything that went in to have uh, the Giz, uh, Tigrinya and Amharic fonts. And I don't think there are many who take as much credit as uh, our beloved Yemane Russo. And we're so grateful, we're so thankful. And uh, uh, as some of the questions um, mentioned i think carrying on taking it on and moving it and expanding it and making it even more enhanced will be the challenge for all of us and especially the young people i think it's much better to consider yourselves as the uh, next developers next programmers of this initiative and take it further and take it even to a higher standards. So we encourage anybody. And then as I mentioned, we will send out contact information for Yamane 
and we will have contact information for our organizing committee. Uh, and as I mentioned, we still will be happy to see others start, organize, and uh, uh, create this kind of platforms as well. Because we're uh, 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 running to our next session, we will end Yamana's uh, uh, discussion here.